Hello and welcome to Saturday Night Crafting. My name is Sasha Reed. If you've not joined me before, then hello and welcome. If you enjoy my content tonight, please do remember to like and subscribe. That means the world to me and it keeps this channel going. Tonight's video is going to be a really fun, simple technique where we're going to pull our mojo back in. For me, I've got the kids home and I'm stressed out all the time. I'm busy all the time and I was struggling for ideas and then I just thought, no, I'm going to get my ink pads out and we're going to do something with ink. We're going to do something with water. Now I've also got embossing folders that I'll be using tonight. I just went through my stash, grabbed the ones that I like. 3D embossing folders will be your best friend. They are the best kind and you'll see why in a minute. I'm also going to use some watercolor card. This stuff is from Arteza. I'll link everything I can down in the description box for you, but some of the things I'm using I'm pretty sure aren't available anymore, so I do apologize. Now, I love square card bases, so all my cards tonight are going to be 5x5 five five square cards. So my panels are going to be an eighth of an inch in size difference. So I've got my top panel, which is the one that is made out of watercolor card, and I'm going to emboss. I've got a second layer, which is vanilla cardstock, you'll see in a minute, and that's going to be slightly bigger. And then I have got my base, which is going to be black cardstock, and that base is 5x5. Five five. So I've got the Uncharted Marina, uh, which is the new Tim Holtz colour. It's my favourite, so you probably can see it a lot. It is my kind of colour. I love a good teal. All I'm doing is swiping it over my embossed area. It is so simple to do this technique and it's so satisfying. All we're going to do is swipe that ink pad over top, get those raised areas really saturated. Now this is why having a 3D embossing folder is so much better than a normal one. It really helps to pick up that ink pad more than uh, a normal embossing folder and you'll see when we get to doing a snowflake one what I mean. So you can use as much water or as little water as you like, depending on the look you like. And all I'm going to do is spritz the front and spritz the back. If you spritz the back first, that will help. It just kind of keeps the cardstock from curling too much. If you're getting too much ink on the top and you're not liking the look of it, you can go ahead and dab some off with a cloth or a paper towel. Whatever tickles your fancy, that's what you can do. As I said before, my layer behind, I've just stuck with the ivory kind of color because my watercolor cardstock is the same shade as this ivory cardstock. So I know that when I apply my ink to that cardstock, it is then going to match the color on my front panel. So I could have used white if I wanted, but then that color might be a slightly different tone to the one I've got on the front. So I just wanted to have a nice border to go around my card and I wanted it to match those colors on the front. So when I'm done, I've mounted it onto my black cardstock and I do put a little panel on the inside as well so that there's space to write. These are new in my stash. I found them at a craft fair that I went to. I will link them down below um, to any shops that I can find that sell them. They are just pre-printed birthday sentiments, which is really nice. And I thought, you know what, my mojo's gone. I don't want to have to think about sentiments. I don't want to have to faff with anything. So I pulled these out my stash and I'm just going to cut them up and stick them onto my cards and I'm going to use them basically on every card. So it's nice and easy and simple and that's what I wanted today. I wanted, sometimes you just need to do something really simple and relaxing to get your mojo going again and get that crafting urge back because sometimes we can get a bit too overwhelmed and stressed out and actually if we just dial it back a bit, it's much easier, much simpler. So my other little... Um, item that I'm going to use today is going to just be a large die cut or a few smaller die cuts and that's going to be kind of our focal point with these little sentiments that we can just chop up and stick on. So really dead simple and I'm sticking to gold cardstock on all of them but one and then that way I can also give them out as a gift set if I feel like as well. I've got several cards ready to go that I can put in a little bundle. So I've got my foam tape. This is from Alina's shop on AliExpress. I'll link her products down below. I've got a few products from her shop that I've used today as well. Now, just to say, because I forgot to do it on the first one, if you've got anything like this where you can kind of cut out the sentiment, if you take a pen and just kind of trace along that edge, so in this instance, it's a black piece of um, cardstock, so I'm gonna just kind of color that edge black because it is white. It kind of makes it flow a little bit better and blend in a bit better. It doesn't look like you've chopped it off a piece of paper. It looks like you've stamped it. So top little tip, just color those edges with a black marker and it'll make such a significant difference in how it looks. 
that is card number one done. You could go ahead and add some gems on if you want, but I wanted to just keep it simple and have nice quick and easy cards. For my second card, I'm using this daisy embossing folder. This one is not a 3D folder, but I found that it was all right for dragging my ink pad over top. It actually picked up the color quite nicely and I didn't get too much spready under, but you can see there is quite hard to keep that ink pad just on the surface. Now I do actually redo this one and use a lighter hand, so you'll see at the end it's got a, a slightly different pattern to those daisies, just because I found the ink was too saturated in the end, so I ended up redoing that one and just going very lightly over the top. Now this is a snowflake embossing folder from Sarah Davies uh, from Crafter's Companion, I believe. This is a standard embossing folder. So as you can see, I struggled so much to get that ink just to hit those raised areas. It was really difficult. So I did dab off some of the ink and I thought, oh, that looks all right. The snowflakes are still quite dark. But when it fully dried, it was a different story. When it was fully dried, almost all the same shade. So it wasn't the effect I was going for. Here's one of my oldie but a goodie favorite embossing folders. This is a 3D embossing folder. I don't believe it is in stock any longer. If I can find it, I'll put it down below for you. Same with this one here from We Are Memory Keepers. And I bought them quite a while ago, but they're 3D embossing folders. So you get that ink really nicely on the top. And then when you spritz it with the water, it kind of bleeds and gives you that sort of different tone look which is what I'm going for I'm going for a dark and a light tone in the same panel really quick and easy to do honestly it only took me a couple minutes to do these backgrounds or to do the front panels I should say this one here I is the only one I haven't finished a card for but I'll share with you how to kind of fix that one because it kind of bled and became all the same color the rest I was quite happy with sort of the tone look that I got with them and how they turned out in the end. So I've done my little back panel with the solid color of the ink and then the top panel is when I spritzed it and had inked it up and you can kind of see that color running and bleeding. It looks quite cool. Now as I said before I redid that sunflower one but here's the snowflake one where you can't really see the snowflakes that well and on the pink one you can't really see that detail either. I think I spritzed that one with far too much water. So all you're going to do if you have done an oopsie like this is you can apply some of the ink back on top again with a very gentle light hand and then you can kind of get that tone on tone look where you've got this darker shade uh, on the raised edges. So if you made an oopsie, here's one way to correct it. If you have something like these snowflakes where I know the snowflakes are there but they kind of just look like a hot mess, you can go ahead and add some white ink on top to make those snowflakes pop again. So I'm just taking my Hero Arts Unicorn White Pigment Ink and I am very, very gently and very lightly going over the areas. This embossing folder is not a 3D embossing folder so it is a lot trickier to hit those embossed areas so you do have to be more delicate and I found with the ink blending tool made it a lot easier to hit those areas without getting in between all the other spots. It was just a nice smaller surface to work with. So that is the second way you can kind of fix it if it didn't look how you were hoping it would look if you haven't got a nice deep embossing folder. So there's my new sunflower one that I did there on the left and these are all the rest of my panels all mounted and glued to my cards and I've also got a nice little cream colored insert on the inside of my car is ready for being written in. So to take you straight through to how I decorated them, I'm just going to share with you what I use. So I have this Brutus Monroe leaf set, um, my lovely gold pen from Arteza. I love this pen. It comes in a set of three if you want all three different sizes, but it's perfect for adding stitching to the edge. It gives a really nice gold, proper, proper shiny gold. And I took those sentiments but used the white sentiment and then colored it with my ink as well to kind of blend it in. And I used those leaves and I love them because they've got a little bit of embossing detail to them. The next one I did, I used this Crazy Daisy dye from Pretty Gets Gritty. I'll link them down below. It's got a really nice gorgeous big dye and so I just cut it and made sure it fit the front of my card and added a little sentiment across the front. Finished that one off. My next one, I use some of these flat back sort of water droplets in the gold color from Alina's shop and this really awesome big butterfly dye. This thing is about double the size of what it is on my card, but I had to obviously trim it down. And I use that one for the reddish colored card, which I really love. 
Then my Christmas one, I had these Christmassy dies from Alina's shop and a new stamp set from Crafter's Companion. And again, I used some of these flat back sort of water droplet things in the silver from Alina's shop and finished off this card. Now, I'm sorry, it's a bit out of shot, but I do have three little pearls on the bottom and the top of the card with that snowflake die. So that finishes off all of my cards. I made six today, have one left that I can make, the pink one that I shared with you where I added some extra ink to it. Um, but I hope this gave you a bit of mojo back if you're lacking in it this summer or if it's winter for you where you are in the world. And I hope you had fun with me. If you enjoyed it, please do remember to like and subscribe. Drop me a comment. I read every one of them even if I don't get around to responding to all of them. I appreciate you and I thank you for joining me tonight. Have a lovely weekend. Bye!